Alright, in this one I'm going to be talking about religion, <laughs> as it says in the title. Um, a couple things before I get started. One, I hope, so obviously, like I said, a lot of times when I make these, well, hold on, like I said in the past, kind of jumping all over the place there, like I've said in the past, I make these while I'm driving on like a mild business trip, if you will. <laughs> um, so that's what's happening now, and it's summer, so it's warm, so I get the window open. So, A, I hope the wind isn't too loud. I, as I was driving, it didn't seem like it'd be too much of a problem. So, I just, I hope the mic doesn't, like, pick this up and over and amplify it. And then all you hear is, like, <laughs> um, The second thing is, I hope there's no, like, obnoxious cars. Like, right before I started this, there was somebody with, like, some crappy exhaust that he thinks sounds really cool. Just, like, popping away. And it was, like, ugh, be annoying while I'm recording. This is much easier to do in winter because I got the windows shut. So, this isn't a problem. It's just me cruising, talking to myself. <laughs> but anyways, with that out of the way, let's get it. So, obviously religion is a huge thing all around the world. I mean, geez, even our constitution has the freedom as, what is it, speech? And, and, and part of that is religion, right? <laughs> what, are the, what are the things? It's like freedom of the press, speech, um, uh, something, something, and religion, Right? And the whole point of that was because, you know, the state started because the Puritans and all that wanted to get away from all the weird religious control that England had and stuff. So they're like, hey, I got an idea. We're going to stay free from religion, motherfuckers. Now you can't fuck with us. <laughs> but anyways, and obviously it's huge all around the world. I mean, geez, you got the Middle Eastern people who go so far extreme that they kill themselves for their religion thinking that that's like a good thing oh i kill myself allah loves me i get all these virgins oh it's gonna be sweet but for me huh is that what they do i just there's a cop uh, that's pulled something out of the road a dead thing out of the road to the side and i just i never saw that before female cop she's actually kind of young and oddly enough cute-ish <laughs> just weird with female cops only because it's like i don't know i feel like it's a cop should be a guy like if something's gonna go down you need somebody that can handle themselves like i don't know i feel like a guy a big guy could easily overpower a woman yeah they have training and stuff but like at the end of the day brute strength is most likely gonna beat that training <laughs> It's not like you're Bruce Lee trained. He was a little guy, but he was considered a good fighter because he had speed and stuff. You know, you're still biologically a woman. You're still much more frail than some big guy who's freaking out on drugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But anyways. <laughs> Never mind that side story of me watching somebody pull a dead animal. I don't even know what it was. At first I thought maybe it was somebody's dog or something, but I don't think so. She's just moving it. But anyways... So yeah, religion. It's a big thing. Um, it's worldwide. Everybody's got their thoughts on it and stuff. But here's the situation for me. I call myself an agnostic. So agnostic means that you think that, or you believe, I guess, that the existence of God is unknown and unknowable. And um, that's what I think. I learned that word back in, what, 11th grade, I think. Part of our spelling, not spelling, but just... We, always, we used to have a list of weird words that you had to learn. They were weird at the time. I mean, now it's like a basic word. Like that or like uh, connotation. I remember that one, learning it. And now it's just a normal word. I use connotation all the time in my daily... <laughs> not really daily language, but, you know, at least once a week I throw it out there. But anyways. I don't go full on atheist because I feel like atheist is just kind of like the dick move. Because then you're just straight up denying it. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I can't deny something that I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that's like science and stuff. Scientists don't just disregard something if they don't know. No, they set up an experiment. And they prove whether it's yes or no. Like Mythbusters. They don't know, so they did their tests, their experiments. So I'm like going to straight up say, no, he doesn't exist. He's not real. Nah. It seems too extreme. Because then what if he is? Then I'm just a dickhole saying that nope doesn't exist because i don't believe it doesn't exist so that's why i go with agnostic it's more of open-minded but still like well i don't know so the reason why i feel this way is i just think well there's a lot of reasons actually a ton of them uh the probably the biggest one is i'm like if he was real if he is real 
then why is there so many religions? Why is there um, Ganesh in India? Why is there Allah with Middle Eastern religions, you know, Islam and stuff? Why do we have our God? Which even then, our God, in, in just this own secular, you know, Christianity, it varies. Some people say Jesus is God. Other people say God's like a trifecta. What is it? The spirit, the ghost, and the... I don't know. But, you know, there, there's that. Then there's Jehovah's Witnesses that say that God, his name is Jehovah God. There's Yahweh, which is a variation of Jehovah, basically. Like, the, they can't... The story is so far all over the place. And it's like, don't you think if God was real, there would just be one? Because that's all there is. If somebody made a story about me, it's just me. You know, you wouldn't have... 50,000 versions of me because there's only me. If somebody wants to do an autobiography on, say, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're going to have one story. A million people could do the autobiography on him, but the story should be the same because there's one Arnold. He lived one life. He has one life story to tell. Yeah, maybe he forgets the details in some of the stories, but generally, it would be roughly the same exact story. So it's like, well, when it comes to religion, why is there so many variants? Why do, why do people under Islam believe in Allah? Well, then, if there's Allah, then what is he? Was he just a guy that died? Do you believe that there's a God over Allah, or is Allah your God, and that's it? Well, then, how come the Christians have God as their God, and not Allah? Like, I don't know, it's just, it's just too many stories, it doesn't make sense. There should just be one. Second thing... Actually, these aren't in order, so I don't know why I'm saying second. But I guess it's just another point, is what I mean. Second point. Is, if he exists, where the F is he? You know, at least when they talk about hell, I've always perceived hell as being in the middle of Earth. Like, in the in the core of the Earth. You know, it's supposed to be hot and miserable, and it's below you. So I always think of it as the core. So, okay, you can at least figure out where hell is and where Satan would be and stuff which I'm not trying to say I I believe in Satan but I don't believe in God (laughs) because then that's just weird like why are you accepting one but not the other you're going to accept the bad side but not the good side but I'm just saying in, in, in accordance with the story then okay that's where he would be but then where's God they say they they always say up heaven is up okay well where is heaven then is it in our stratosphere or is it in space somewhere? Like, where exactly is it? Where is he hanging out? And then, how big is God? Like, the the, the idea is that he's all knowing and omnipresent, and you can you can pray to him in your head, and he hears it somehow. <laughs> he can hear your silent prayers in your head. Or even if you say them out loud, he can somehow hear you, even though. You're talking in your bedroom before you go to sleep. Quieter than I'm talking right now even. But somehow he hears it. And he hears all of them. All of these people praying. Somehow you can hear them all. And make sense of them all and stuff. And it's like, how does that even make any sense right there? How do you hear... Like, if you hear people murmuring to you, then what happens when people are yelling and it's actually loud? Is that like piercing your ears and you're bleeding because it's too loud? Or... I don't know. But anyways, point is, is where exactly is he? How can you be anywhere and just talk to him and he hears it? And, like, how big is he? Is he... Is he, like, some kind of massive giant? I mean, if he made the planets and everything, right? He's got to be kind of big if you can make a planet. You couldn't be, like, a human making a planet. That would take you forever. You would die before you could finish it. So, like, where... How big is he? Is he... Is his head, like, the size of the moon? Is he, like, you know what I mean? And, and, and then if he's this huge, where is he hi- hiding? Is he in another dimension? I mean, they talk about other dimensions are, like, mind-bending for us because we live in 3D. And then once you ugh, once you get to 4D, I ugh because there's a dead squirrel on the road. And I try to avoid these things, but I got some dickhead passing me. This happens every time. There's always somebody got to be right there so I can't swerve over. So then I basically had to, like, hit it more. I mean, it wasn't, like, a full-body squirrel it's been hit several times already so it's kind of flat but that's not the point i don't want to run over it more that's disrespectful to the poor squirrel's body you know Ugh. anyways though so what is he then is he in another dimension is that what this is like not, maybe not the fourth dimension but is he in the fifth dimension or the sixth dimension or something seventh dimension when things start to get weird 
that we can't wrap our minds around because we just live in three dimensions. Or even weirder, is he the other way? Is he two dimension? <laughs> is he one dimension and somehow created all these other dimensions? But then that wouldn't make sense if he was that way, but I don't know. Like, where is he? I mean, I feel like, you know, they say that, oh, God loves everyone and all this, but then it's like, okay. Well, in the grand scheme of things, everybody would be like, the the relationship of us to God would be like, I don't know, an ant to us, maybe something smaller than an ant. Like, it's insignificant. We see the ants and we're just like, oh, look, it's ants. Cool. They don't matter to us. So, like, why would we matter to him? And then why does he put preference on us, you know, humans, over anything else? Oh, I made all these other animals, you know, cows, horses, zebras, giraffes, lions, tigers, bears, birds, penguins, ostriches, emus. I made tons of insects, too. And ones that are kind of insignificant, like a tick, but then ones that are a little bit more cooler, like a butterfly and stuff. Um, I made cicadas. I made, uh, you know, katydids that make all this noise. I made snakes that can move around even though they don't have any kind of appendage other than their body. You know, I made all this cool stuff, but I really don't care about them. It's just the humans. Just them. Like, why would we be special and everything else is kind of just there? I mean, geez, even plants. Plants are living. Yeah, they can't move and stuff, but they're still living. Yeah, I made all these plants. made some super cool flowers that smell really good. I made these uh, Venus flytraps. They eat flies. It's not kind of something goofy. A plant that's eating eating in a, 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 a living organism that can actually move around, but the plant is eating it. Ain't that something, huh? Yeah, I made trees. Some of them can grow huge, like redwoods. You know, they get really effing massive. They can live forever, too. But I don't care about those. just the people. I just care about the people. <laughs> it's like, well, why? What makes us so special that nothing else matters in the grand scheme of things? I don't know. Doesn't seem right to me. I know, like... When I make something, it all matters to me. Like, for example, this is kind of stupid, but in Minecraft, you know, my daughter and I play that a lot, and we've built up a... It's kind of crappy. The layout was terrible, but still, we've built up a crappy little city, and, like, all of it matters. All the buildings I made matter. I don't want anything to happen to them. Like, I wouldn't want a stupid creeper to come along and blow up one of my houses that I built, because it matters. I put the time and effort into that. Even my daughter's. Hers are pretty... You know, a lot of hers are... Her older homes, I should say, are kind of half-baked, so to speak. But that's because she was younger. She was more... I mean, she still is a kid. But still, we started playing this, what, when she was seven? So, you know, she's little. She's not super creative yet. She, Her mind's all over the place. She starts making one house, and then she's like, oh, I want to make another one. She comes up with an idea. Doesn't finish the last one that she was working on. Now her houses are starting to get better. She's made a new house that is actually pretty good. It, it rivals one that I've made. I'm like, this isn't bad, you know? It's, it almost looks like something I did. But, um, yeah, point is, though, is even her crappy houses, like, we made those together. Like, I don't want anything to happen to her houses either. And, um, yeah, so I'm like, and that's just a stupid video game. Like, if there was an actual being out there that made everything, well, why would he only care about people? That would be like me making all these houses in Minecraft, I guess, and I only care about one. Hey, you can fuck with the rest. I don't care about them. Just this one, though. Don't touch that one. Yeah, I put tons of time and effort into each and every one of them, but just this one matters the most. The reason? Yeah, there's none. I just... I don't know. I just prefer this one over the rest. Like, I don't know. And then... (laughs) Yeah, so then back to how big is he? Like, is he human-sized? Is he gigantic? Is uh, Like, where is he? And then it becomes like a meta thing, too. Because if he exists, then how did he come about? Where is he from? I don't know. The story always goes that it's just him. He created all. Okay, well, where did he come from? How, how was he brought into existence? And then how did he bring everything into existence out of nowhere? Is he magical? Because then it becomes, I thought magic was like a bad thing in religion. Well, some religions, I guess not all. Like again, I know Jehovah's Witnesses are against Harry Potter because magic, oh, that's not good. That, that leads to the devil. 
And they were even weird about Pokemon for a while, too. I think they've gotten, they've relaxed about Pokemon, but at first it was like, I don't know, I think their logic was Pokemon introduces, like, gambling to kids. Not gambling, but addiction to kids. Oh, but these kids get into Pokemon, and, you know, oh, it's like an addicting thing. They want to collect all the cards, or, or they play the games, they want to collect all the characters, and, uh, no, we can't have that. I don't fully know the logic. All I know is, back in the day, my mom used to have a friend who was a uh, Jehovah's Witness, and that was the weird situation that I had to deal with when I liked Pokemon stuff. She used to try to talk to me about it like it was such a bad thing, and I never understood. I was just like, okay, cool, I don't care what you think, this is what I like, and this is what I'm going to (laughs) do. But, yeah, I think, though, that they've relaxed on that, because there is a channel that I listen to. What is it? Telltale? I I don't know, I forget what he calls himself. But he's a former Jehovah's Witness that hates on him, too. And I, and, I follow, and I follow him and watch his videos because I can relate. I mean, I know that Jehovah's Witnesses are pretty crazy. I mean, uh, they're very culty and stuff. And, um, yeah, he calls that out all the time. They Apparently, they have these weird videos, too, that I didn't know about until I started watching him. They're, like, uh, videos aimed at kids. So, it's, like, CG and stuff, CGI. And, yeah, I didn't know that. I don't know when those started to come out. Maybe they're newer than what I'm familiar with, but... Yeah. So, anyways... Back to the whole magic thing. If he's magical, well then, isn't that bad? Oh, oh, oh no. Well, that leads to, the, leads to the devil. We can't have a magical guy. <laughs> but well, how did he create all this stuff then? Out of nowhere. I can't make something out of nowhere. You know, I need to, if I'm going to make something in Minecraft, okay, yeah, technically that's out of nowhere, but that's different. That's a video game. So then I I guess that goes back to the whole, everything's a simulation theory that people have. Because I I guess if we can make stuff out of nowhere, then maybe we are in a simulation like Minecraft, where you can just pick up and poof, I made some trees, made some inhabitants. Like, oh, what the heck? So, (laughs) not to jump off course again, but... What am I supposed to do here? I don't know. I got the blinking light. It's kind of confusing. All these lights are blinking around here. None of them are actually working. And I don't like this. I want the light to be working. <laughs> the lights were blinking back where I started. And now I'm deep in this other town. And lights are still blinking. And I'm like, uh, okay. It's even worse is now there's a stupid cop behind me. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't like this even more now. I mean, that was blinking yellow for me, so I just slowed down, but, like, I don't effing know. <clears throat> but anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so what? Are, are we actually in a simulation? I don't know. Everything seems real to me, though. But then they say, well, if you were in the simulation and think you're real, think about the video game characters when you're playing a video game. Maybe they can become sentient and think that everything's real. And I'm like, well, what? I don't know. It just seems dumb. Like, we're real. I mean, you, you can stab me and it'll hurt. Like... You you can stab video game characters. Don't hurt them. They're just a bunch of zeros and ones. (laughs) So, I don't know. But, so it becomes, where did he come from? And then it also becomes, okay, maybe this goes greater then. Does he, um, ah, stupid lights. Does he, does he have gods? Or a god? If he does have a god, then it becomes, well, what about his god? Does his god have a god? Like, how far up the chain does this go? And then it becomes, if his God, if God has a God, does his God affect us? Or does this become like a management situation where, you know, your boss's boss doesn't really affect you. Your boss affects you, but your boss's boss only affects your boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is that how this works? I don't know. Because then if his God matters to us too, then why don't we care about his God? We only care about God. I don't know. I mean, none of it makes sense in general because even if you go with the science side of things, like how did everything get here? They say it's the Big Bang. Everything was a, uh, everything was a, it was in was in one little cluster like a star, and then it just blew up, and everything came out, and everything just landed where it is now. And it's like, well, that don't make sense either, because how? Where did that even come from to begin with? And like, if there was just one little, very dense star that held the entire universe, then it's like. Where where did that come from? What what was that sitting in? What was it just floating in nothingness? Well, there, nothingness 
still has to be somethingness if it's floating in it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> None of it makes sense. Where did any of it come from? I don't know. But it's like, I feel like the God story doesn't explain anything either. It just bring, if, if anything, it brings up more questions. Because then it's like, okay, well, where did he come from? If he made everything, who made him? Was he just a thought that was floating around? Was he just a thought that was floating around? And then it just decided that it wanted to come into existence or something somehow? Like, that don't make sense, though. <clears throat> you know, like, a thought was just like, I want a body. Poof, hey, I got a body. I want more. Poof, hey, I made plants and stuff. But then they also say that he's, his days are thousands of years for us but for him it's only days like they say he's only on day seven so you're telling me that this guy has been around for only a, a a week now he's done everything in a week and they're saying that he's on his resting day now but then it's like in day five or six that's when he sent us son and this would have been a blink of an eye though so he sent down a son which for us was 30 something years but for him it would have been a blink of an eye so he sends down a son and the kid's already dead so like <laughs> I mean, if a day is a thousands of years, 33 years would be, you know, maybe not a blink of an eye, it'd be a couple hours, but like, I don't know, so what, you, you get a kid and then you see it live for a couple hours and then, I mean, the pregnancy would have been instant, yeah, for her it would have been nine months, but for him it would have been instant, basically, oh, I got a pregnant, oh, there's the kid, I can cut this guy off, it's a trailer truck, <laughs> I just have to take a left, <laughs> yeah, I totally crushed him, he's still not even in my river, oh, there he is, yeah, totally dominated. But anyways, yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, they say he, he sent his only son for your sins. But it's like, well, what does that truly mean in the grand scheme of things? So he was here in his in his eyes for a couple of hours. That's all it took. This guy to be down here for a couple hours. And okay, yeah, everything's forgiven. I don't know. <clears throat> and yet you're telling me that his days are what's equal to years for us but he can hear everybody's prayers and stuff well how fast would this seem to him and then like just in addition to all like the open-ended questions about religion like everything i've just said it's like i don't know there's there's how do i phrase this like other portions of it that just make it like crazy because people just believe so that's why they fall into these things blindly like for example you got all the televangelists. Those mother effers are all loaded. And it's because, you know, they, they, they trick everybody. Oh, you gotta, you gotta do your, what is it, your soul? You gotta put in your money for your soul. Because someday God will get you. Like in a positive way, you know, get you and hook you up. And does it ever happen? No. These people spend tons of money. Like, for example, Peter Popoff. That guy's loaded. He gets like a brand new private jet every year tries to make an excuse oh i need to just so i can get to where i gotta go so that way then i could do my preaching and my ministry and spread the word of god it's like bro shut your dumb mouth you're living ridiculously lavishly having your own private jet a new one every year jeez and like these people are just blind to it for some reason they just give them their money so there you go yep this is because god wants me to do this. Yeah, yeah god wants you to make that guy have a super high quality of life He's living way better than you. What, God wants that? God chose Peter Popoff to live a super lavish life. No, this guy is in it for the scam. I mean, if you look at Peter Popoff, he's so satanic looking. <laughs> Especially when he smiles, it's so creepy. He's got like fangs for teeth, his face all wrinkles up. It's like, what in the F? You are not a man of God by any means at all. Like, <laughs> if you dark, if you take a picture of him smiling and darken the background a little bit, Maybe change the complexion of his tone to a very mild red, like give him like a severe sunburn or something. This guy would look like he's like a posing for the cover of the next Exorcist movie or something. Like, it's ridiculous. But these people just blindly give him their money. Yeah, okay, I gotta do my soul for God. You, you mean you gotta do your soul for Peter? Because he wants to buy himself a new house or he's looking to buy an island or some nonsense. Like, <laughs> same as the um, Islam. You know, you get the extremists that go and kill themselves thinking that it's for, you know, for a good cause or something. Oh, I gotta be, what is it, jihad? I gotta be a jihadist or whatever it's called. No, a martyr. I gotta be a martyr. And it's like, you realize all this ends up doing is you kill yourself, right? Like, 
there is no positive end game for you. You're not going to go to some fantastic, marvelous, heavenly place and have all your virgins. Like, you're dead, and that's it. Your life is over now. It didn't have to be over. You could be still existing, but you chose this weird path, and now you're dead. But, like, that's what their religion is. Well, it's not really their religion. It's the extreme version. You know, it's kind of like in the States how you have Democrats and then you have the far left psychotic Democrats that are like, oh, I'm super liberal. I'm non-binary. Look at my blue hair with pink streaks and it's a butch haircut and I'm going to wear a woman's top but men's bottoms because I'm non-binary. Or you get normal Democrats that are just like, yo, I'm just aligned with the Democratic Party because I believe in the actual values of the Democratic Party, not this liberal nonsense. <laughs> So that's like that. That's, you know, regular Islam is normal Democratic Party, but then the jihadists or whatever, the martyrs, they're the um, idiots that are <laughs> the leftist extremists. But, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not the only one that thinks it's ridiculous, too. You know, Bill Maher, however you say his name, I don't know what year it was, but he did that documentary, Religulous. Religious, however you say it. It's like religious and ridiculous merged together. Religious. But it's true. It's like all these thoughts. You know, it's like one one part in this thing he has. Um, he's talking to this guy about religion and and God. And, you know, oh, uh, it's like a, a little shop owner, an antique shop owner. He's talking about God did a miracle one time. He wanted it to rain. He asked for rain. No, oh, it started raining. And Bill Maher's like, okay, it rains. Like, that's... Now, if you said it started raining blood or something and you asked for blood, okay, maybe. Maybe there's a correlation. But just rain, that that happens. And then he's like, ask the guy about Santa. Do you believe in Santa? And the guy's like, no. Santa's not real. And he's like, yeah, I mean, why would you believe in Santa? You know, a guy that can travel around the whole entire world in in, in a night. And can, you know, give kids presents while he's on his trip and all this. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But, you know, a guy... That's somewhere up in the sky that you murmur to at at night before you go to sleep and he hears it. Now that's something I can buy into. Because it's just ridiculous. It it doesn't make any sense. It's just like they brought up the story about... I mean, they mentioned how the stories, like the Bible stories, are just as... as, Oh my word. As just as ridiculous as, like, fairy tales. You know, like the whole thing about the guy that was in the whale. What, What was that? Um... I don't know, but, you know, what I'm talking about, the guy that was in the whale for a few days. Isn't that a Bible story? Or any of the Bible stories, basically. They're, 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 they're ridiculous, but it's part of religion. So, no, it happened. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, that's totally realistic. But, like, you hear a fairy tale, no, that's ridiculous. But it's like, well, if you switched them and called the religious stories fairy tales, and the fairy tales a religious story, how would you feel about it then? You'd think the same thing. You'd think that the religious stories are, are ridiculous, and those fairy tales are all of a sudden good now. Oh, yeah, I can totally buy into that. <laughs> it's kind of like the thing that they do when they they ask um, people about what they think about quotes, and they pretend it was a Trump quote. Oh, when Trump, when Trump said this, what do you feel about that? And they're like, oh, he's such an a-hole. I figures he would say something like that. And then they go and reveal that it's like their poster boy, Biden, um, you know, Obama, and they're like, What? That was actually Obama? No, well, this is why he said it. You know, and all of a sudden, now they justify it. When Trump says, it, oh, no, he's such a bad guy, then, then they find out it's about, oh, well, it's because of this. Well, that's the same thing as this. You make fun of the fairy tales and say, ah, oh, they're super unrealistic, or make fun of creatures like Easter Bunny and Santa and all that. But your religious stuff, that's, that's, that's realistic. Okay. All right. I don't know. It's just too too much. Way too much. That doesn't make sense. And it's like, and then you have these extreme religious nuts, like the Jehovah's Witnesses. God, they're... I mean, Islamic people are pretty ridiculous, too. What do they do? They gotta pray, like, every three hours or something? It's like, oh my, jeez. But Jehovah's Witnesses, they're ridiculous, too. They gotta do their stupid ministry nonsense. They gotta go to two two-hour meetings a week. Plus, they gotta go to another meeting that's a Bible study for an hour a week. That's five hours just being in your church. Plus your Bible studies that you're supposed to try to do with people. Plus your door-to-door nonsense. Plus going to the assemblies. That's like a whole weekend just shot for religious purposes. What the heck? There's a cow in the road. Where did this cow even come from? 
<laughs> Why is there a cow in the road? Where'd this cow come from? Hi, Moo Moo. <laughs> And you get some weird psycho woman on the side of the road yelling, hey, easy, hey, like, like we didn't see all the cars stopped, like, duh, or we couldn't see the cow. Like, relax, woman, jeez, you saw it, obviously we see it. Anyhow, <laughs> what was I saying before this cow distracted me? <laughs> I don't know. There's just way too much moving, not moving parts, but just too much unanswered questions, and it's like, I don't know, for me, I'm somebody who likes absolutes, I, I guess, like, I like math, why, because math is always what it is, one plus one is always two, it's not gonna change, if you're holding one stick and you pick up one more stick, you have two sticks in your hand, you know, we might change the words that mean those numbers, like, one might become Zava, and two might become Blurg, so it's Zava plus Zava equals Blurg, but at the end of the day, it still means what we call two right now. You still have two things in your hands, whether it's you have blurred things in your hands or you have two things in your hands. It means the same. And so when it comes to religion, it's just, I don't have concrete proof. You know, I never met God. I never talked to him. I never met Jesus. Never talked to him. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he's out there floating around or something. I don't, I don't even, that's the other thing too. What does he do? Does he float? Or does he have, like, a kingdom? And to him, he's, like, sitting on a chair. But to us, it's in the sky. So we think, oh, he's got to be floating or something. But then again, is it in the sky? Like I said, where is it? Space? The sky? I don't know. And then it's like, if you got this whole entire universe, did he make the whole universe? If so, then what did he do with... Why is it only Earth that has life? Why, why did all the other planets in our solar system just get screwed over? <laughs> Or is there some history that we don't know? Maybe all the planets had life, and Star Wars is kind of real, and they just effed them all up. Mars got screwed over. Venus, they did some kind of experiment, heated the planet up, killed everything. I don't know. But it's like, okay, if there's life here, is there life anywhere else? I mean, there's got to be. The universe is huge, and they say it's constantly expanding. So where did he put any other life? He just chose right here. Why right here? Why this one little ball? I mean, we're not even that big of a planet in the grand scheme of things, so why this one little ball? You're just like, yeah, I'll put some life here. I don't know. Wouldn't you rather put life on, like, a bigger planet? Like, if I was a kid playing with my Play-Doh, I'd rather dress up a bigger ball of Play-Doh than a smaller one. It would seem funner, no? I don't know. And then it's like... Also when I said that the universe, like, they say Andromeda is coming towards us. Andromeda is very far away, and they say it's, like, billions of years before it collides with the Milky Way, but it's, like, if there's a guy up there that's controlling all this, well, then what's happening with Andromeda? Is he just kind of forgotten about it, and it's just sliding towards us slowly, and he's forgotten? Is he intentionally letting it do that? If so, what's the point of that? Like, I don't know. Or is he going to step in and be like, whoops, I just realized my galaxies are sliding too close to each other and fix it. And then all of a sudden people will be like, oh my God, God is real. He just fixed this. You know, you see some weird distant planet coming towards us in the distant future, you know, billions of years from now, and then all of a sudden it goes away and you're like, what the F? <laughs> I don't know. And then what else? What else was I thinking about? keep coming up with topics and i forget them and then i come up with new topics topics the dang cow distract me i had a big topic there until i saw a cow just hanging out in the middle of the road <laughs> i don't even know where he's from there's no farm around there's no i don't know where this cow came from <laughs> but anyways yeah it's just i don't know I don't know. And uh, what the heck else was I going to say? I know there's more. I don't want to end it now. I know there's more than I was thinking. That's confusing. Um, well, yeah, the people that dedicate themselves, like I was saying, the Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff, and the Islam people. So it's like, on one hand, if religion is real, I'm like, okay, well, then I guess, I guess you did the right thing if you're supposed to go to church and stuff. But then that seems like overkill. Like, there's a, there's a God that wants to be constantly worshipped? That seems a bit arrogant, no? Like, that's weird. 
No? Like, just constantly like, oh, I gotta praise you five times, five hours a day, every single day. <laughs> I don't know. And then, like, but then if there's nothing, and there really is nothing, well, then these people just wasted their whole lives just constantly worried about praying to, to nothing. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, way to go, I guess. I don't know. That's that's why the answer always is you just gotta have faith. You just gotta believe because there's no proof. So that's the only option. That's like too. If you talk to somebody who's religious, what do they do? They show you stuff in the Bible. Well, the Bible says here. Hey, how about you don't use the Bible and try to convince me? Because all you're doing is going in circles. I question your religion as it is. So you're gonna point to your Bible, which is just about your religion. That I don't know who actually wrote it. You know, it's like, how do we even know that the Bible is real about? about talking about God and stuff. What if all it was was people back in the day were, like, you know, discovering drugs? And they didn't, you know, you know what I mean? Like, just discovering. They didn't know that it was a drug. They just found, like, a mushroom growing, and they're like, huh, this thing looks weird. I wonder what it would taste like. And they ate it, and all of a sudden they're tripping serious balls. And then, like, they're hearing voices, and they're like, what the heck is that? And they don't know what's going on. So then they start recording it, and then they eat that mushroom again. They're like, something weird happened. I think I was talking to, like, a higher power. And then, boom, now they're inventing God. Oh, I can hear them. You know? And then they wrote down these stories. And then we're over here analyzing. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, my God, that's what God said. That's what happened. But really, it's just some guy tripping balls. <laughs> and then I also think maybe some of it was just made up. What if it's made up stories just to be entertainment back in the day? You know, some of these books and stories, whatever. Maybe it was just stories. When there was nothing. I mean, they didn't have cars. They didn't have TV back then. They didn't have radio. They didn't have anything. So maybe it's just stories that somebody wrote. Like the Iliad and the Odyssey. Those are like long-form Greek mythology stories, books. So what if that's all it is? And now we're like, oh, God, yeah, this is definitely this is definitely the manual to our invisible Lord and Savior and all that. Yep. When really it was just stories that people wrote for entertainment and were taken it the wrong way and way out of context. I don't know. Or, and then I feel like some of it was just written, like the Ten Commandments say. I feel like that was just like a way to kind of have like a rule of law with people. Maybe the, the whole God story was invented and they're like, I got an idea. Let's make up some rules that really will scare the people. Tell them that, you know, you can't kill each other or else you're going to go to this bad place called hell. Tell them that they can't, you know, oh, you can't lust after your 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 neighbor's wife. Yeah, I know it's a natural uh, human thing to feel attraction towards somebody that's attractive but nope it's gonna we're gonna say that's bad make people live by all these weird strict rules as you know and maybe that's all it was just a way to try to i don't know control people and instill good values in people or whatever and now we're like oh yeah that's the thing ten commandments yeah that's from god he wrote it down on those those slabs for moses yeah you know this all-powerful all-knowing being could only write on some rock slabs you know he couldn't come up with paper or something better nope (laughs) i don't know so yeah oh and don't let me don't let the whole thing where i said religious religious however you say that act like it convinced me it didn't i watch religious because it's what i think like i said I thought these thoughts way before high school, and then I learned the word for it was called agnostic, and I was like, oh, hey, there's actually a word to describe me. (laughs) So, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's about it. That's that's just kind of where I'm at. Like, it's just, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of questions that aren't answered. And I feel like maybe it's just an attempt to try to answer those unanswerable questions, like how the universe came about and stuff, but it still just leaves too many open gaps. Like, okay, well, maybe you answered one question, but you just produced two more. Like, (laughs) did this solve anything? No. I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to be a dickhole. I'm not saying I'm atheist, because that seems too extreme. And if he is real, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just, I haven't met him. I don't know. You know, it's kind of like another thing even is like Osama, you know, Barack told us that Osama got killed when he was in office. But did he really? I don't know. I didn't see his dead body. I wasn't part of uh, team SEAL Team 6. So I don't know. Maybe he's still alive. Just like this loser Biden says that somebody was killed. Was he really, though? 
I don't know. I wasn't there. Did you see him get shot? Are you sure it was actually even him? They they all have their body doubles and stuff. Especially Obama. Uh, uh, geez, Osama. He did. So it's kind of like the same thing with religion. I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's it. So yeah, see ya.